All right, euthanasia is still rare in the United States, but it's increasingly common in Europe. Tucker Carlson recently sat down with attorney Robert Clark to discuss the state of assisted suicide in the old heart of Western civilization. Mr. Clark, thanks for joining us. You represent Tom Mortier. Uh, explain to an American audience not familiar, as familiar with euthanasia as practiced in Europe, his experience with European euthanasia laws. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Tom Mortier is a man who lives in Belgium, and he found out that his 64-year-old mother, who was physically healthy, she, she had no physical condition, she, he found out that she'd been euthanized the day after it happened, when the hospital phoned up his wife to ask them to come in and make the necessary arrangements. This isn't the day before it happened, it's not the day it happened, but the day after he gets this phone call to ask him to come and make the necessary arrangements. And what was his response to this? Well, he, as you can imagine, like, like any son, was devastated. I mean, this is a man who um, hadn't really given a huge amount of thought to the euthanasia laws that are in force in Belgium before this happened. And his experience through all of this has turned him into someone who is willing to stand up in the difficult environment that it is in Belgium and say something is very, very wrong here when we decide that instead of caring for our sick, instead of caring for the vulnerable people that we have in society, we're going to offer death to them. How common is it in Europe? It's getting more common, and this is one of the frightening things. So I know there are some U.S. states that are considering this, and I just encourage them to look at the experience in Europe. So we've got a couple of countries. Um, let's take Belgium as an example. And right. whenever euthanasia has been legalized, we've seen two things happen. So the first thing is we see the number of cases going up every single year. And so the cases started relatively low in Belgium until we've now reached the point where, according to the official government statistics, more than five people per day are euthanized in Belgium. And so these stories that you hear, the arguments that you hear that say, well, this is an exceptional thing, this is a rare thing, it's not true. And that's the first big problem that we see, that wherever euthanasia is legalized, that the numbers go up. And then secondly, the categories of people that can access euthanasia start to expand. People start to kind of push on the edges. Um, those that originally said, well, this is gonna be really, really rare, um, start pushing out. So again, let's go back to Belgium and see what, what actually has happened. So 2014, Belgium extended its law to allow child euthanasia. So there is no lower age limit in Belgium at all. A child, um, as long as they understand uh, whatever that means, that what's happening to them, can choose to be euthanized. And then most recently, I saw a proposal in the Netherlands for people who are just tired of life. So no physical condition, no mental condition, um, just people who are tired of life. And so this is what's really sinister here because you see a law that people argue for as an exception, but that is never what it becomes, and you can see that pattern wherever euthanasia has been legalized. So a particularly sinister element of this is the, is the economic part of it. So it's obviously much cheaper to kill people than to treatment, treat them, either for their diseases or their depression. So isn't there a built-in incentive on the part of the state that is providing health care to, to do this because it, of the cost savings? Well, absolutely. I mean, you and I both come from uh, places that have a, an aging population. People are, are getting older. Uh, and, and a very, very real concern is, is this so-called right to die that people talk about that, that, that doesn't exist in international law. This right to die actually very quickly becomes a duty to die. And so you've got vulnerable people, people that we should be caring for, um, who are going to start to feel maybe an implicit pressure, maybe just they feel they're a burden in terms of money right. or a burden in terms of time, um, but maybe then explicit pressure as well. Um, so cases where people uh, have been told that they're a burden that maybe their family members can't help them anymore, can't sustain them um, in their caring requirements. And so, yeah, there's a very, very real concern here that once you start to crack that door open, that it leads to vulnerable people um, feeling very, very real pressure. Have health insurers taken a position on this? Have they admitted that they're for it? 
So, I mean, the, the, the system of, of, of medicine is, is a little bit different in, in, in most European countries. Yes. But certainly, if you look, for example, in the UK at some of the groups that have been involved in this discussion, so the UK Parliament very recently um, debated this issue um, and overwhelmingly rejected a bill that would have legalized um, assisted suicide, as they called it, in the United Kingdom. And every major, for example, disability rights group was against that bill because they recognize the burden and the right. threat that that's going to place on some of their members, people who are vulnerable, people who are um, elderly. And then take, for example, the doctors. Um, the World Medical Association has consistently said that euthanasia is inherently unethical. It's not something that should be promoted because governments have an obligation to protect life, not <laughs> to promote or to assist in, in death. And yet that's exactly what we're seeing happening of in these European countries. And we're going to see more of it as the costs go up. Thank you very much, Robert. I appreciate that report from Europe. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.